there's a big guy that, on TikTok, and he's like, What's up, everybody? I'm Hunter. And I'm Chris. This is Lost Socket Garage, and today we are going to be doing a cooped fastback conversion on a 67 Mustang. It's good! For many, the 60s and 70s is viewed as the pinnacle in American automotive production, giving us some of the most iconic cars in history. The 80s, not so much. What the 80s did give us is two guys with a passion for bringing these classics back to life. Their goal is to educate, motivate, and most importantly, make the mistakes so you don't have to. <coughs> Mother Welcome to Lost Socket Garage. What's up everybody? Say hi Ronnie. This is Ronnie with a mic. He's having fun. Stop it. Uh, today we're cutting down. Well, actually, we've already cut down the 67. Um, completely. Let's, let's take a brief look here, and then uh, we'll go to the time lapse. Look at that. Look at that. There's not much left of it right now. All right. Doing a coupe to fastback conversion on this. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Cut to us cutting, cut to cutting this apart. I'm hungry. I felt you breakfast. <laughs> so, one of the things that I would definitely recommend you do is check out our video on actually everything that you'll need for the. Um, conversion itself. I'll post a uh, link here um, so that you can just go watch it. Getting all the tools set up initially is uh, really, really important for you so you're not out running to the store. Um, that being said, the first step is really to just start cutting it apart. Um, what I'm doing here is taking out the rear quarter panel uh, so that I can reach the inner structure uh, first and foremost, I'm you know need to get the windows out here. Now these quarter windows you're not going to use again, so toss them, sell them, do whatever you want with them. Now when we ship, when we have cars shipped to us. Uh, it's easier if the cars are gutted. One of the main questions that we get is how do you want the car shipped to you? What condition? It's best if all the carpet is removed. It's best if the interior is all removed. Um, headliner doesn't have to come out. Uh, we're not going to be saving that. But if the car is gutted inside, that's definitely going to make our job a little bit easier. Um, we can take all of it out for you. As you can see here, uh, we're leaving in the dash. We're leaving in the uh, the radio, steering wheel, etc., um, and just covering it with a weld, basically a fireproof blanket. It's like a weld blanket that you can pick up at Harbor Freight for pretty cheap. Definitely recommend getting one or two of those. Don't just start cutting into this. Um, make sure that you're mindful of what you're cutting. Uh, we're gonna cut everything off of the wheel wells, inner structure wise, and the whole roof is gonna come off, etc. But you still don't wanna find yourself cutting into a wheel well and uh, making a big gash when you actually don't need, uh, when you don't need to. We found that cutting out the larger pieces first helps out a lot. Uh, so for example, when we're cutting out inner structure or the trunk splitter, we're gonna cut out uh, as much of it in one large piece as possible. And then we can come back through uh, in an areas like around the wheel well, as you can see here, or the rest of the roof um, attached to the top of the A-pillars. We can go through with our spot weld removal tools and uh, 
uh, take everything off. All right, now everything's cut apart. This is how far down we actually end up cutting it. Um, first, we take measurements off of the B pillar so that when we put a new B pillar on it, uh, we know exactly where it sits. So before you cut out the old B pillar, make sure you take that measurement. Easiest way to do it is um, having a really loud heater. Jesus. Uh, this seam right here to the front of the B pillar, take that measurement. In this case, it's uh, 35 five sixteenths um, did the same thing on the other side most of the time we actually try to save the outer wheel wells in this case we did have to do a patch on that one and replace the entire right hand one um, but yeah keeping the stock tail panel this is a side assembly put on just kind of set on right now so the next step is we're actually going to put everything together, start measuring, making sure we're pretty close to where we should be at on our measurements. Uh, so put everything together, start measuring, hopefully get everything set up for final fitment and then we can weld this bad boy. So you can see we're already on a frame jig. Uh, that's why we didn't use any of our fancy bracing that we used to do because we finally got a frame jig so let's uh let's put this together ronnie should we put this together no yeah no let's get her done now for the 67 and 68s we are not using the pre-welded side assemblies we did a video on this i'll go ahead and uh put a link up there but um, you can save quite a bit of money by not doing the pre-welded side assemblies. Also, we're not a massive fan uh, so far of how uh, they do the measurements uh, on the pre-welded uh, side assemblies, etc. So uh, we do have a video on what pieces you need and how to weld those together. Uh, so check that out and it's going to save you a lot of money. Now when we're putting the inner structure together, we have a few measurements that we go off of. The B pillar, as explained earlier, uh, is going to establish how far back the B pillars are based off of the um, stock B pillar location. Sometimes we keep the stock B pillars, sometimes we replace them. It just kind of depends. Um, one thing that you do want to make sure you do before you do your conversion is uh, something a lot of people don't think of, and that is uh, actually adjust your doors. If you have a door that's sagging, uh, get a new hinge for it. Make sure that your door gap is correct. That way you know that if you're starting with, if you're using that B pillar, that it's not gonna affect your door cap gap at all. Now the other measurements we're gonna use is the width. Uh, in back, we keep the stock A pillars, so we only really need the width, how far they are um, from side assembly to side assembly in the back and then the height of the side assembly, front and back. You're gonna see Ronnie putting on the drip rails here. It's very important to do that uh, before you start putting on your side assemblies um, or the quarter panels and your roof, etc. We get a lot of questions about measurements. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to reach out on Instagram or Facebook. There's going to be a lot of massaging that you're need, going to need to do. Not everything is just going to fit together well. Uh, you're going to have to hit stuff. You're going to have to massage metal quite a bit. You're also going to be using quite a few clamps. Um, in the video I was talking about earlier, we show you several different types of clamps that we like to use. And then we're also going to be using a lot of self-tappers. Um, self-tapping screws are awesome. We do use Clecos sometimes. 
um, but self tappers are definitely where it's at. I would recommend the hex headed uh, self tappers versus the Phillips drive self tappers just because you go through way less bits that way. Now when you're putting a roof on, the best way to do it is back to front. So you get your rear gap correct for your back window. You can see a couple measurements going on here. And then you leave your roof uh, kind of suspended up in front and then you're going to fold that over onto its final home and bang it with a block of wood and then clamp it as you can see I'm doing here. Tell the crowd what you're doing right now, bud. Stop it. Are you trying to pop popcorn with your really, really expensive torch? What are you doing? Now once you mock everything up the first time, um, you are going to throw a bunch of self tappers in, clamps, etc. Make sure everything is uh, lining up correctly. You need to take a look at your door gaps. Um, that's why never do this if you don't have your doors mounted. Uh, you need to make sure that the gap between the quarter panel and the rocker is correct. Um, here we're taking a look at the corner of the roof and making sure that that's fitting correctly into the drip rail double and triple and quadruple check your measurements again and again and again. Ronnie's getting started on uh, welding. One of the things that you always need to keep in mind when you're um, doing these conversions is when you get all the measurements right, you don't have to tear everything down again. Uh, actually prepping all of your surfaces by uh, drilling all of your holes ahead of time. We do have this we showed in a, a previous video um, that I'll link at the top. Um, prepping all your surfaces for your plug welds ahead of time. That way, once you get to a point where uh, all of your measurements are correct, you take off the roof, you take off the uh, rear quarters and the drip rails, and you can just go ahead and start welding your inner structure. Um, that's where we're at right now. So we go through, we clean off all the surfaces so that we can plug weld ahead of time. Um, yeah, then we just, uh, Ronnie, are you welding right now? Ronnie. That's the normal in glass way. C, grassy ass. On to the next time lapse.
everything has been taken off at this point, so we are welding and Ronnie's welding the inner structure, taking out screws as he goes. One of the things, and you can barely see him doing it, but one of the things that he likes to do is actually kind of pre-treat his welds with heat. So he'll torch some of the areas that he is welding uh, to make sure that there's no other stuff that can get in there while you're welding that can compromise the integrity of the weld. As you go along and weld, make sure that you're tapping down uh, all of these little areas. You want the metal to be as flush with the panels as possible. So tap them down as you go or clamp them as you go. There is a technique that we use for the filler panel where we weld angle iron on either side of the filler panel so that we can throw a clamp on there and actually close the gap between the quarter panel and the filler panel. Everything has been fit before and screwed in with self-tappers. So we mark the holes where the self-tappers, uh, because sometimes you'll, you'll re-drill these a couple of different times. So just make sure that you have the right self-tap holes uh, marked. You usually just mark them with a marker. That way when you're putting stuff like the roof back on, uh, like we're doing right now, we know exactly where it is to match up to the measurements that we took earlier. Again, every step of the way, measure, measure, remeasure. And if it's a little bit off, sometimes you just gotta stare at it, think about it, and walk away from it for a minute. This was a pretty simple issue. It got wrapped up very, very quickly. The filler panel sometimes goes underneath the quarter panels and sometimes it goes on top. Uh, we have pulled all of our measurements off of a ton of different real fast specs, um, and sometimes they have the filler panel laying on top, sometimes it's one and one, it really just depends. Take your time with this project and measure, measure, measure. <laughs> All right, we're done with Dale's. Uh, this turned out really nice. We'll do a walk around the car. Chris, on a scale of one to why did I quit my job and start an automotive shop, where would you rate this? <laughs> We're pretty damn good at them now, so. We are pretty good at them, in all fairness. Uh, this one actually, in my opinion, uh, went pretty damn well, pretty smooth. We did do an outer wheel well on one side just because it needed it. Uh, but let's kind of take a, a walk around. Um, just kind of show you door gaps. 
so these are brand new doors. We could have used the uh, stock door. Well, not stock, but they were dead stock. shaved door handles on them and the customer didn't want that. So um, we ended up buying new doors for them. Door gaps. With all of our conversions, we do best effort door gaps. So your paint and body guy is not gonna be mad at you, um, but that's pretty average for us. Uh, we go through in all the spots where we've plugged weld, etc. During transport, so this is actually going to Kentucky. So during transport, we don't want like the surface rust and stuff like that. So we go through and throw rust barrier on all of our weld areas. Um, even around the wheel well, you can take a look at some of the gaps here. R look really nice. He didn't want scoops, he wanted the sail vents. So we actually pulled some off of another fastback that we have. Let's take a look at the back. He doesn't have quarter panel extensions in because they're in the, shut up! He doesn't have quarter panel extensions in because they're actually in the box, in the trunk. We had to load a lot of stuff into the car for shipping, so we're not really gonna be able to give you a good view of like the bracket kit and everything. Uh, Ronnie took care of that, did a great job on it. Uh, we did end up using the stock tail panel. We got a uh, GT rear balance for it um, and just kind of screwed it on there. Take a look at the other side. Um, door gap, same thing here. Um, obviously all of this kind of needs to be adjusted a little bit, uh, but that's more for like, you know, the finished product when you have the window sash in, uh, and your paint and body guy can adjust all these gaps. But we think this one turned out, uh, turned out pretty well. We actually bought a new hood for it with the turn signals. So that's pretty cool. Got all new bumpers. Those are inside of the car. So Really, I think this thing came together pretty damn well. Now it's gonna be off to Kentucky. Woo, Kentucky. So yeah, that's about it for uh, this conversion. It went together really, really easily. That's a 40,000 foot overview uh, of how to do these conversions. There's a lot more that goes into it. Uh, we spent thousands of hours doing this stuff and really perf protect it, or perfecting it, uh, taking care of all the measurements. So our back window lays straight in just perfect um, our door gaps are great etc so if you ever need help with one of these conversions you need the parts for the conversion or um, anything else you know feel free to let us know Chris you got anything to no hit us up for pricing hit us up so we can get your car done yeah another thing is we do have a fastback you can't tell because it's under the snow <laughs> it needs about 95% of a car. The roof is good on it though. So if you are interested in a real fastback, us building a real fastback for you versus a coupe to fastback conversion, definitely let us know. Um, we might be just taking the roof off of that, but let us know in the comments or hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, uh, our website's lostsocketgarage.com. Uh, we have a Patreon, we have all of that cool stuff. So just let us know if you have any questions. Um, our next video, I don't know. I don't actually know what we're doing for our next video. So that'll be fun. We're not doing a Miata run. <laughs> Ronnie's behind the camera going, I'm gonna do my Miata. <laughs> and, uh, oh, breaking news. I can say Eleanor now. Eleanor, Eleanor, yeah. Eleanor, yes, Eleanor. we can. Eleanor, Eleanor. We can. Eleanor! God, that feels good. <laughs> just, just say it, just say it loud. Say it loud. It still feels weird. <laughs> say, it, say it loud. Eleanor. That was the quietest Eleanor, but we're going to take that. <laughs> so until next time, do what you love. Don't be a dick. Stay classy. And hope you're not getting snowed in like we are. Peace. <laughs>